Hi there, I'm April Spadina and thanks for joining me today in my studio where I'm going to show you how I created this beautiful creature. Hi, welcome back. I'm April Spadina and I'm in my studio today and I'm going to be drawing a giraffe. So I'd like to share with you about my process of drawing a giraffe and go right through from start to finish and we'll wind up with a lovely picture hopefully in the end. I'm going to start off with a primed and painted canvas. I prime it with gesso first and then I paint it with white artist acrylic paint. So I've got a nice plain white surface which has a bit of texture. Today I'm going to be working with willow charcoal which is my favourite medium to use. And I have my little kit here. I'm going to, here's my artist kit. And I'll be using this size to begin with and then this size to um, add when I'm working up my layers and then I'll be finishing with a little skinny piece like this. The image I'm going to be drawing today is this fella or lady, probably a lady. I get my images to draw by watching documentaries on the internet about the animals that I want to draw and I'll watch hours and hours and hours of documentaries and as I'm watching them on my phone I'm taking screenshots whenever they've kind of got their head a certain angle or they're looking a certain way or standing a certain way I take screenshots of that and then from that screenshot I turn it into a black and white image on my phone and then play with all of the resolutions and the contrast and things to bring out the value. So I'll wind up with a lot of dark areas, a lot of really light areas, and then a lot of mid-tone areas that I can work with. And I never really put a background in, I just work from that on a white background. Thank you. So I always start off with using the side of my charcoal like that. It's easier to smudge things around and move it around when you're working on the side of your charcoal. So I start off the side and I hold my charcoal like that and I just basically rough in the image. I just love giraffes so much. They are just beautiful. And they've got these great big long eyelashes which I like to over accentuate. Why not, hey? Giraffes have these horny things on top of their head. They're actually called isocones. And the way I remember those name, the name of the isocones is because I think it sounds like ice cream cone and I imagine these two little ice cream cones upside down on the giraffe's head. <laughs> Boy giraffes have bigger isocones, they've got, they can get really really huge and lady giraffes have the small dainty ones so I'm thinking that this lady here she's a girl giraffe because she's got little dainty isocones. So we're going to start off with the isocones and we're just my giraffe's head is probably going to take up uh, probably two thirds of the canvas and I'm working with the side of my charcoal and just mapping in, I'm just going to put that over there a little bit, mapping in where my image is going to be sitting. There's the eyes there, another eye here. It doesn't have to have any detail in it at this stage, it's just purely mapping in and getting the location of everything around about where I think I want it to be. There's the nostrils, the little mouth muzzly bit, um, that kind of goes. 
goes more like that. And then the ears come out like that. What's this ear. I'll move that in a minute. And we've got this middle little humpy bit at the top there. And then the neck comes from about there and about there. So basically that's the sort of shape that I'm going with now. And you can see it kind of looks like a giraffe at this stage, but I'm going to play around with that as we work our way through. Um, I'm just going to take that off for a second and just pop that ear in a bit better. Now giraffes, they generally look different to each other. They all have their own special features. They all have unique spots. Um, that's like the, our fingerprints. That's what their spots are like. And depending on the region that they're in, the spots can vary as well. Um, you can get sort of ones that are like splayed out like a little star or big patchy ones like this. And, um, and But their faces look different as well. They all have their own special look about them. So if your giraffe doesn't wind up looking like that giraffe, it doesn't matter because it probably looks like another giraffe that's wandering around over there. Okay, now we've basically got our shape in here now. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to really put on a whole heap of charcoal where the dark bits are. And see how it's all dripping down like that? All those little dust particles of charcoal are running down the canvas. I really love that. I never wipe that away. I always keep it there. And because I think it just adds to the beautiful nature and the quality of charcoal, working with charcoal. So there's that. And there's this dark patch in here. And we've got a couple of dark patches over here. Instead of trying to look at the whole object and going, oh my God, I'm overwhelmed by this picture that I'm trying to draw, um, I'm never gonna be able to draw it, break it down. So break it down into shapes. So instead of looking at the ear and going, oh, how am I gonna draw an ear? Just look at the shape of it. So these little dark bits in here, all the giraffes have these little three dark bits. And I look at that and go, well, that kind of looks like three little fingers in there. Right? One, two, three. So I'll get my basic shape and it's rounded on the outside and then it's kind of, it's like a rounded triangle with a scoopy bit taken out of it. So it's like a rounded triangle with a scoopy bit taken out of it. And that's where the little hairy bits are going to be on the inside of the ear. And then we've got these really dark three dark marks in here. That is the inside of the ear, the little fingerprint thingies, see that? And we'll do the same on this side. So we've got our All of that charcoal that you've just laid on there is going to get smudged around to all the mid-tone areas. So it doesn't matter if, there, if it's not quite in the right spot or it's looking a bit strange, you're going to be moving that around anyway and coming back to it to add your layers anyway. So we'll look at our picture and we can see that this is a mid-tone area here and in between the nostrils. And then we've got these really light bits on the inside between the nostrils and this light piece over here. We've also got light bits over here and the eyelids are light. There's a light section in here. So we want to avoid all those areas there that are really light and push our darks 
our charcoal in with our finger pads into those mid-tone areas and you want to be going in the direction oops, this here you want to be going in the direction of the shape of the animal's head so the object's head so we know that this is going to be a hump like that so that's the direction that we're going to be running our fingers okay we know that this is curved around like that so we're going to be curving our fingers around in that direction otherwise you'll wind up with a really flat image so we'll start rubbing around so you just smudge it you're smudging and as you're smudging you're looking at what you're doing looking at your image working your way through And although I've just smudged that out and it's no longer as dark as that anymore, that's part of building up your layers. So I'll, I'll go back in here in a little while and I'll add more darkness to that area that I've just taken away all that darkness from. Oh, there's there's the little nostrils. And little nostrils are sort of shaped like exclamation, not exclamation marks, um, commas, or inverted commas. It's really tricky to try and get your brain to stop trying to draw what you think you're supposed to be drawing. It's very, very difficult <laughs> because you think you know what you're drawing and you think you're doing the right thing and then you look at it and you think, how did that, how come that doesn't look like that? And sometimes it's really important to step away from your artwork and go and have a break and come back and look at it with fresh eyes because boy, oh boy, you can wind up with a huge mess if you stand there and look at it too long. We'll come back and do the, the neck a little bit later. That's about as far as I'm going to work on this piece at this point. Now, I'm going to give it a spray of um, spray fixative to set all of this in place. And then I'm going to come back and start to add my layers. But before I do that, I need to make sure there's no areas that I'm thinking is probably in the wrong spot because once I spray it, I can't take away anything else from this image. Once it's sprayed with fixative, it's set in place. So if I'm looking at it, I might... And so I'll grab my eraser and I'm just using a normal general eraser here. It's black because it's covered in charcoal. Wipe it on the side of my jeans, clean it up a little bit. So I know that this area here is going to be really light. I've got a big light section over the top of its ear here. And under here is quite light as well. So I can just use my eraser to take those areas away. Also, if you see in this area here, they've got little soft little fluffy bits on the inside of their ears. So I'll use my eraser just to take away a little bit of that and create those little fluffy bits. On both sides. So it's very light over the top of here. 
And up there. And then there's these little fluffy bits in here. Oops. I find my sharpest edge to do this. Mess it all up so it doesn't look so uniform. Um, and this is quite light around the bottom here as well. The eyes are more shaped like that. They've got real sort of droopy eyes, soft droopy eyes. And also, there's a little bit of a highlight just on the outside edge of the eye. Under there. And same on this side. Um, the outer edge of the nostril is quite light. And just keep referring back to your reference photo, otherwise you'll start doing what you think your brain is telling you that you should be doing, which will be wrong. And we'll just take that little bit away there. A little bit of that out of there too. A little bit of that out of there. It doesn't have to be exactly to the picture. If you want to put a little few more little sparkles in the eyes, you can do that. If you want to put the longer eyelashes or little, some giraffes have like little crazy feathery tops on top of their isocones, which I really love. If it's not in your picture, by all means, add it in. And that's called artistic license. So you can play around and have fun and, um, and create your own piece of artwork. So I'm going to just leave this at this point now. And I pre I'm pretty happy with the, oops, hang on, no, I'm not, that eye is wrong. See how I just stepped back then and realized that this wasn't looking right? So I'll just take that away there, make that more droopy. I think I'm going to give it a spray now. I'm using workable fixative. It's important to use workable fixative when you're trying to build your layers up because if I sprayed that with a fixative that wasn't workable, I wouldn't be able to continue to work over the top of it. It would be more like a varnish and would set it into place. So um, this is really, it's not good to breathe this in. You should do this in a well ventilated area and uh, my room, my studio's very open and um, I've got lots of airflow. I've got my doors open around me, um, but I'll still, when I spray it, I'll go and step outside and wait for it just to settle. I don't want to lose all of those little beautiful little particles that are falling down the canvas, so I'm going to gently just dust it from a distance, set those particles in place, and then give it a bit of a more thorough going over. Okay, I'm back. There's no toxic cloud in the room anymore. My charcoal, I've left it for a couple of minutes, so it's, it's all dry now. Your charcoal will smudge a little bit, but nothing like what it, how it was smudging before. Um, it's pretty much bound in place now. So the next layer that I work over the top of this is the exciting, this is where the exciting stuff happens, because my next layer is going to be darker than this layer here that we've just done. It's because you fixed it with the um, spray fixative. So every time you spray it with your fi spray fixative, your next layer that you draw over the top of it is going to be a little bit darker. 
and that's how you build up all your layers with your spray fixative and then more charcoal, spray fixative, more charcoal. So we've just sprayed it, this is all dry now and we can start to go in and add some detail and I'm going to start using this, this size um, charcoal now. This is still willow charcoal. I hold my charcoal like that, not like a pencil. I hold it like that because I'm, I'm working on the side of my charcoal. I'm not working on the point like that. And it also um, supports the charcoal stick right the way through. So it, it sort of pre prevents it from snapping. You do wind up with bits that do snap especially the really skinny pieces, um, they snap. And, but that's okay because you can use them until there's nothing left. But I always hold it like that and I work on the side. So we're going to start putting in some lovely texture now and building up our layers. See how I'm working on the side of my charcoal? and then I can smudge it with my finger to get it over to those other areas and blend it in. And see how it's going on darker than the previous layer? You can still smudge it, but you can add little scumbly lines and texture and detail. This is where the personality of your artwork starts to come out. And I just, I run my eyes all the way around the picture and work all over the place. So I, I'll do one section and then I'll flip my eyes over to another section and see that and go over and start working on that instead of... You can see that the light's coming from this direction. So this side of the face is going to be a little bit darker than this side. It's not a really, really strong light that's coming over, but it's strong enough to create shadows on this side of the giraffe's face. So our little highlight on the isocones are going to be on that side, so we'll just leave that side alone a little bit. Not entirely, because there are dark areas over there. But I'll leave that side there open. back and have a look at it. See where you've made a few mistakes and you need to make a few corrections. Sort of 
push your little bit of charcoal into those areas there to keep those little fluffy bits still in there. So we decide to put our little three little fingers back in here. Just working my way into those little furry bits again. With the edge of that point that I've now created. Still, I can see that that's darker, slightly darker on the outside of that ear. So I can still add some in there and smudge that around. Now we're gonna start building up the roundness of the eye. So their eyes are gigantic and like big shiny round marbles. And we're going to create that by pushing it around with our fingers. They've also got quite a heavy over the top eyelid which creates a dark section underneath the eyelid of shadow. And then they've got these big um, lower eyelids that are dark as well. And we'll just add that in there like that. And they kind of wrap around the outside of the eye. And this is where I'm starting to use the point of my charcoal as well to put in this detail. Um, soften that little edge there. We'll come over to this one. We're going to spray that again and build up another layer after we finish this eye. that comes around here like that and it's like a little bit that comes around here like this see how I'm using my finger to kind of rub sections out give it a good shake Stand back and spray it so that I'm not going to lose all my little dust particles. I'm back and this is dry. You only have to leave it for a couple of minutes and then it's all dry. If I tried to work on that and it wasn't dry properly, it would be all um, tacky and my charcoal wouldn't go on and it would take it would actually take off some of this charcoal. So we always wait until it's dry. Now at this stage, I'm going to add in a few of his, her, spots. Um, so once again, I'm just going to work with this little piece of charcoal and I'm going to work on the side like we did right from the beginning. Um, and I'm just going to add these in here. Like that. I'm 
not really, um, you don't really have to follow your picture at this, while you're doing this because like I said before, they all have their own unique spots on them so it doesn't really matter if they're not the same as what's on the picture. And then I'm just going to rough those in like that as well, working around the sort of the shape of the neck of the giraffe. thing I really love about working with willow charcoal is I love all the fingerprints and the smudges that you can create and they're just so much fun. I also find that if I'm working while I'm standing up my work tends to be a lot looser and more sort of flamboyant but if I sit down and work my work's always really very more it's more refined and more detailed um, and, and the I... main well I'm just going to go like that and that's my main. Pretty easy. Pretty simple. I'll use this one and continue just to build up those layers still. I'm going to add a darker section just above, um, just underneath the top eyelid where the shadow of the eyelid would be on it. And then I'm going to um, just darken this section here. So the outside edge of my eye, my giraffe's eye is going to be light hitting it. And just use my fingers to smudge that in there. And same on this side here. And that creates that domey kind of marble shape. I might give it a spray now and just spray that neck. Just have a little dig in here and we'll find a, a little skinny piece like that. That's going to be our next size that we're going to work with. And we're going to just start to work around and pick out all the outer edges of the giraffe's head. And I like to just sort of let the charcoal be pretty freeform at this stage. Um, I, I roll it around in between my fingers to loosen up those edges nicely. Um, and I'll go around all of the edges just nice and loosely. It doesn't even matter if you go outside the lines with charcoal. I think it just adds to the organic nature of the medium. I'm just, um, I'm just pretty much scribbling now. I'm letting some personality in, some more personality, by just adding little scumbly scribbly lines, some little wrinkles that quite wrinkly around their muzzle and over the top of their eyes. They've got a lot of wrinkles. I'm just just playing now. I'm just adding playful stuff in there.
It has a few little sort of splodgy, smudgy bits, little tiny, like almost like freckles really. You can just sort of smudge in with your finger. more freckles on this side just randomly everywhere just very freckly girl this one and then we're going to also add some little squiggly lines on that side where that darkness is And now I'm going to, I'm really liking it. Whoops. Now I have two pieces of charcoal. Just loosening things up with my fingers, smudging it in with, put in, oops, I might just go back to this one here to darken that underside where the shadow is hitting. Um, they have little whiskers, so we're going to put that in with our little fine piece of charcoal and just randomly, you don't want it looking really um, uniform so just change the direction of the whiskers as you go a few here and a few there and if you find that your charcoal is getting a little bit blunt just roll it around you'll find a sharp edge and if you can't find a sharp edge just snap it off to create that sharp edge again, especially when you're doing eyelashes and whiskers, you really need it to have a really sharp edge there. Um, now we can put in a little bit more darkness around here, some darkness up there. So that's the lovely deep eyes they've got. And we can start to put some, I'm just going to grab a longer piece of charcoal. So I hold it from the very end and I just kind of flick, I just kind of flick. She's got kind of a heavy lash like that. And then she's got all these other lovely ones that well, she doesn't really. I'm putting them in myself because and they're just so beautiful. Look at that. Wow, I went right off the canvas there, but it doesn't matter because it's giraffe. Okay, now I'm pretty happy with that. I think she's pretty lovely. So I'm going to give it one last spray with my fixative and then I'm going to add a few little highlights, or I might just um, put another couple of little freckles up here, just because. So the very last thing that I do on a charcoal drawing 
is I add light and sparkle to the eyes. And I do this by using a paintbrush and a little bit of white paint. I keep a little fine, fine paintbrush in my kit and a little pot of acrylic paint. And I just use a tiny amount of paint and I paint in these little areas where you would imagine the tears would be sitting or the wetness of the eyes would be sitting and also the area where the light would be resting and sparkling off the eyeball. Um, and I'll sometimes I'll also do a few little white whiskers or a little, I'll pick out these little fluffy bits in the ears. That was a gecko. <laughs> um, and I'll also sometimes go around the nose, but the very last, all the time, every time I do a charcoal drawing of an animal, the very last thing that I do is add that little wetness to the eyes and the sparkle. And it just sort of tugs at the heartstrings a little bit more. So this paint, this picture is finished. I've added way bigger eyelashes and I, I add, added some more darkness to certain areas just to make it, just to bring it out a little bit more. Then after I finished that, I sprayed it with spray fixative and then painted in those little wet areas of the eyes and the little sparkly bits. And that's it, she's done. So there we have it, the completed piece. I hope you've enjoyed the process and had a bit of fun along the way, learning about how I get from start to finish with my drawings. I have certainly enjoyed myself um, and I hope I've inspired you to grab some charcoal and get a bit dirty with it. I'll see you next time. Bye.